So then, any sound that comes in will get broadly cast to uh, all the echoers. I really enjoyed doing these. Not at all. Let's turn this back around before Mr. Meeps gets back. Everywhere they went. No, it's never difficult for me to get around the city. I am rather. <clears throat> no need to do the voice now. Take your time. We'll get it up and rolling once you're done, and then no pressure at all. Yeah, feel free to finish your smoke and unwind. Boy, oh boy, am I glad to hear that. These gaspers are doing nothing to calm my nerves. I already smoked my way through half a deck this morning. Meeps will give us the signal before we start. Speaking of, where is he? I see Treble in as assistant, but not him. Oh well. I want you to know there's no need to be nervous. This whole thing should be fairly easy at this point. So you says. But a couple of newshawks coming around and putting the squeeze on me? And to have what I say heard by everyone across Sharn? One slip up and suddenly I find myself being fitted for a wooden waistcoat. And changing my address to the City of the Dead. First off, we aren't reporters trying to pry into your life to make you into a stoolie. We just want to know more about the race. We don't care if their persona's real or not. Mm -mm. Just talk about what it's like to race. And secondly, we could honestly care less what you're caught up in. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be like this. The whole halfling hero thing was nothing but a quick grift that got away from me. I was going to be a florist. My ma was from Eldeen, you know. She taught me how to grow them. Instead, I'm stuck doing this race each year, pretending to be some goody-goody palooka from Talenta. Oh, goodness. That seems like a lot. Do you need to talk about that with anybody? It might put you at ease. Maybe. A little chin wagon with a couple of red caps feels like a better option than a head shrinker from Jurasco. Let's not use red caps. It's offensive and I'm not even a zill. Apologies. It's my nerves getting the better of me. All right. Here goes. I'm wanted by a lot of people here in Sharn. I'd been working as a hammer for a group of skyjackers. We would drop in on sky coaches and airships riding glide wings. We'd swoop on in, take out the guards, and then I would go to work bypassing whatever was in the way. Locks, wards, glyphs, wouldn't matter. I would hammer my way through them all. We kept mostly the small jobs and worked for ourselves. Is that how you got into racing? Because you would, like, zoom around on the glide wing. Did it make you really good at it? It did, but not because of the attack. It was always the sudden need to vamoose that helped with that. When the fuzz has got you behind the eight ball, you gotta beat feet, or you'll end up in bracelets. So I learned to fly. None of that seems bad. You picked up a skill, and you're damn good at racing. Well, yeah, but what happens when you get in a damn near inescapable situation and get out unscathed with your pockets overstuffed with silver? <laughs> you spend it. Bing pot, pally boy. You start small. Pay off the people you're indebted to. Maybe you can splurge a little bit. Those new overstuffed pockets make you realize you could use a set of real trousers. Not a worn and torn set that are more patched than pants. But you can't have a real pair with this bed sheet turned shirt you currently have. Eventually you find yourself in a cobbler shop in a nice district, spending your last few sobs on a pair of impractical shoes that tie the look together. Which leads you right back into the life. Wanting to feel like my life could be better. Oh my gosh, yeah. Kept leading me back into the life I didn't want. So I ended up taking more and more dangerous work, expecting the next payout to be the one that would stick. But they don't? Course not. No one with a story worth gabbing about takes the smart choice. Most of the time they take a bad idea and double down. Ask any adventurer. It's just one poor decision after another. Makes sense. So, I kept doing jobs. But eventually, the crew I flew with got pinched, and I had to join up with this ragtag bunch. The Ilium Three. Three brothers, just a couple of mooks led by this booze hound older brother. They were all halflings, and pretty good on a glide wing. They brought me in on this job to rob a hash house that was actually a front for a dream lily den. Normally, the idea of taking from the Boromar clan would have been an immediate pass. 
but I'd seen what Lily does to people. It is just <coughs> awful what is happening in some districts of this city. You got that right, Luffy. So I figured that if we can get in and out fast enough, we burst in, subdue the couple of guards, and I magically finesse the doors to the basement. We pushed our way in and found an alchemical setup. And as I went to work magically cracking the safe, my new compatriots took a look around the lab and made a terrible discovery. We hadn't broken into a Bormar dream lily farm. Instead, we found ourselves in a dragon's blood den, owned and operated by the Dask. Dragon's blood is rough stuff. Not as rough as the Dask was going to be. I heard they have these wargs that once they get you sent, they would single-mindedly hunt you day and night. It was too late to back out at this point, so I finished breaking into the box. As I swung the door on the safe, a cascade of coins began pouring out. And I managed to pocket a handful or two when I heard a scream I will never forget. It came from Billiam Ilium, the middle brother. He'd been keeping an eye on the door upstairs, and the scream was him being thrown down the stairs. I looked to see him bounce down the first couple stairs. The scream was cut off in an instant as his body began to stiffen and turn gray. As he hit the next couple of steps, the sound of him colliding, now a sickening, heavy thud. For the briefest of moments, I could still see the life in his eyes, even while his face was frozen in that contorted agony. Then his body hit the landing and bounced into the wall, and he shattered into a wave of broken stone. <gasps> a Medusa! Well done, Miss Rascal. You got on faster than the two I was with. Gilliam, the kid brother, was a real hothead. And he charged toward the stairs, and it made it halfway up when a massive knoll rushed in and stick, split him, just like an ooze, right down the middle. Both sides just slid off the axe. Let's keep the gore to a minimum. I had a late lunch, and it's barely agreeing with me. He tried Marsh's food for the first time, and Silas was not a fan. Sticky grub buns sounds like a pastry, not a live bug that I'm just expected to eat while it looks at me. I will keep your weak constitution in mind. I slipped quickly behind the safe, and I looked around at my remaining partner. I spotted him beneath one of the tables with several large bottles of red dragon's blood. He starts chugging the bottles in desperate gulps, trying to get down as much as he could, as quick as he could. I knew he was a caster, and I'd heard what that stuff does. But after he got the third bottle partially down, our would-be captives had made it into the room with us and began taunting us, trying to goad us out from hiding. Well, Dillium began to move from under the table towards them. He's muttering something in Draconic, and his fingers are starting to make patterns. Nothing unusual there. He's clearly going for a spell. Except he's beginning to glow from the inside. Not just a little, mind you. He is glowing with a white-hot fire from his gullet. He manages to finish the spell and sends a fireball across the room. And then another blast shakes the room from where he was standing. Best I can figure is, he burned himself out when he drank too much dragon's blood. It charged up his spell and used him as a component. Two fireballs at once in such a small space and you survived? Only barely. The heat from those blasts was more intense than anything I had ever experienced in my life, and it hit me right on. Took all the hair off of my head. Whoosh! Even my eyebrows. I had to go to House J for quite a while to get all of this to grow back. But even more than that, it burned away everything in the room. Everybody in the room burned to bone. The illicit laboratory was completely destroyed. And worst of all, it superheated the coins. The silver just began to melt slightly among the copper and gold pieces. I took the small handful I had, and I fled. That's an incredible story, but it doesn't really tell why you went into hiding. It seems like it all got fairly well resolved. Only because you don't know the when of it. The Dask found a bunch of burned halfling bodies and just assumed it was the Boromar. They, of course, retaliated hard the next day. It happened two years ago, the 9th of Ron, 
A day that will forever be known for... The Baldry's Feast Massacre. Miss Rascal is on quite the roll. Wait a minute. You can't honestly think that we're going to believe this. It's all the Sov's honest truth. So the single bloodiest incident between the Dask and the Boromar is because you inadvertently robbed the wrong place? Exactly. When I heard what the Dask did to the member of Sedan's family, I felt sick. Two carriages full of people on their way to attend a dinner. Women. Kids. Well, that's the kind of mistake that stays with you. So, I dove straight into the first bottle I could find. And as your gin-soaked companion already knows, that never helps. I let it slip to someone I thought I could trust, but once word left my lips, I wasn't so sure. So, my options were to take him for a fall, or to hoof it myself. So you fled? I tried to. I grabbed everything I could carry, slapped together a disguise, and hopped on the first sparker headed out of town. I was quite shaken up, and I'd taken a drink or two to calm my nerves. I had never taken the rail, and to be honest, the idea of rolling around in an electrified metal coffin wasn't making me any calmer. So, a little drunk and a lot confused, I asked a guy for help. A bit of misunderstanding later, he thinks I'm coming from Gatherhold and helps me find a place in Little Talenta. New papers, new life. Why would you stay knowing the risks? I love this city. It feels so alive. I can't imagine not being here. This gave me a chance. I can't imagine how hard all of that must be. Oh, 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 Silas? Uh, Meeps is motioning to cut you off. Uh, no more drinks before we start. Uh, Luffy, this is water. After the grubs, I couldn't put anything in my system otherwise. What, what, what are they saying? I can't... Me, me, tre treble, what is he saying? Uh, the singer... It, it's been live. What? what? For how long? For how long? Ah, shit! A and this... Was a live reading of Antox's novella in progress, uh, Glidewing in the Stocks, an alternative history where Antox has pulled from his current life as a Glidewing flyer in the race of the eight winds and inspired by other gritty crime novels. Yes, and how good is Antox as an actor. It, pr pretty pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, of course. I love getting into the character's head before a race. It makes me feel like I have something to race for outside of glory and money. And unfortunately, due to a glitch, we are unable to continue our full interview with Antox today, so remember to keep an ear out for those echoes of hope.